Hello and welcome to the first edition of PY Pole Foundation Design for Power Poles and Standalone Poles. Uh, this uses the PY Foundation Design Method, um, which is a load versus displacement um, finite difference uh, method. We actually use it using a finite element solution rather than finite difference. But let's get into it. So as you saw, if we go up into this gear icon in the top right, that's your settings. Um, you can change your password in there. Uh, you can do a force sync, which just makes sure you've got all the latest forms updated and your data's stored on the server. Uh, and then basically don't change any admin stuff unless you know what you're doing. Um, there's more details on that in the user manual and we'll probably do some videos on it later as well. But to start a design, just go into the foundation calc list. This lists all the previous designs that you would have done and you can just start a new one, top right. So select your organization, whatever your project name is, and then we go project number, file identifier. That project design is automatically input based on um, your login. Put any additional comments in. You can either hit the GPS button and that'll pick your GPS location. Um, or you can actually select it from the map. With Windows, um, this selection using the map doesn't really work properly. Um, it's just a function of Windows mapping, um, but it will work on the Android and iOS versions. So we'll just select that. You don't have to put in a GPS location either, by the way. Um, it won't hold you up if you don't do it. Generally, we want to check ultimate, um, ideally, I don't think we need to with foundation design for poles, but let's assume we are. Criticality just refers to the uh, security level of the line. So here we'll look at general distribution, subtrans, or transmission. We go next. Now we select the pole material, whether it's concrete, timber, steel, etc. Select the pole size, let's say 14 meter 32. These are all automatically populated based on pole size. That's just a default value. You might want to say, okay, we need at least 10 meters above ground line for the pole just to maintain our clearances. Uh, your site spoil, your backfill types, you can select different ones there. Um, water table depth, soil properties change below the water table. So you can enter a value there. Um, ground slopes, so we actually take into account side slopes and the reduction that has on the foundation capacity. So we might have a, a side slope of two degrees, for instance. It's not really going to do much. Um, and then there's two options here for setting the, the actual design loads on the pole. Generally, you want to use the maximum capacity of the pole because that allows the utility to go back and add stuff to the pole. As long as it's within the pole capacity, then the foundation should be OK. Otherwise, if you do want, you can actually enter the, the um, design values for each of the, the load cases. Um, these factors here just set the relationship between the ultimate capacity of the pole and the serviceability loads and the sustained loads. Generally, they're going to be pretty close. Uh, and then with the soil properties, you can either use the Osgrid soil map if you're on their network, which You'd probably be using their Webpack anyway, which this was written for. Uh, or we can enter manual soil layers. You can enter up to five layers at the moment. We may change that in the future, but generally, if you're trying to enter more than five layers, you're trying to get a bit more accurate than what this whole exercise is about. So depth to the layer bottom, use 1.5. Soil type, let's call the first one clay. We might make this firm clay. Save that. We can add another one at, say, 2.5 meters. Might be a stiff clay. This is data you should be able to get from the Geotech report. There is a lot of info on this in the user manual as well that sort of gives you a uh, some advice on how to uh, look at geotech reports and get this sort of data out of them. 
Okay. Um, for the last layer, the software assumes that that layer continues all the way down to 40 meters below ground line. Okay. The minimum embedment depth is just based on 10% of the pole length plus 600 millimeters. That's the old standard minimum. We don't really have the data to go less than that. Um, we can, but we need to be very careful with it. So it's, it's sort of an advanced thing, but you won't be able to change that. Um, you can enter details for breast and toe blocks. Um, that's in the user manual if you want to play around with that. And then once you've filled out all the info, open the calculation page. Again, this is just imported through. And then we run the calculation. Now that references a web service, so you do need internet connection for this one, as opposed to our structural lines inspection software where we don't. Um, but that'll run the calculation and give you the required embedment depth. Now, what we found is these values are actually pretty close to, to reality. So with poor soils, like the um, generally weak clay that we put in and with over a bit of sand, uh, that's not great for a fairly high strength concrete pulp. So it does give you a, a design embedment depth that is a bit higher than normal. That's not always the case. Quite often it'll actually give you a, a, the minimum embedment depth. So that's the result up here in the grey um, fields is the minimum embedment depth and the pole size that are required and then it just breaks down the actual results for each of the load cases. Um, we are going to make it do the minimum for each of these load cases uh, in a future release, but at the moment it's still just based on what the embedment depth is for the, the worst case. And then it just shows you the, the rotation that it solved at and the, the ultimate deflection. Now, Whilst the limit for rotation might be 10 degrees in the design, this is likely the first rotation value that it's solved at. So there is quite complicated uh, calculations going on in the background. And with this type of finite element of, um, solution, you don't always solve at you know, a 10 degrees rotation. Sometimes it has to come back to get a solution because it's balancing the stiffness of the pole with the stiffness of the soil. So don't be afraid if you don't get a result that's um, up around your 10 degree rotation. But what we have found is the overall embedment depths align very well uh, with the type of values of rotation that we would want to see under those loads in the field. Okay. In short, this is your result. Go with that. Uh, do you want a report sent to you? Generally, you answer yes. Uh, the data extract, I don't think we need at the moment. We may not even do that at the moment. Uh, and you can add an email address if you want as well, but it will send it to the login email address. Hit submit, you get the email, and it sends you back to the poll details page. You can change things, rerun if you want, or we just hit exit, and it goes back to there. And to find the one that you just did, um, you can just go into start typing a value and it'll filter. And that's it. I hope this is useful and yeah, look forward to seeing some designs that get better results than uh, what's been done traditionally.